Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I here to talk about WebLIC today, which stands for uh, Web-Based Linguistic Chaining Tool. And uh, just give you sort of a brief uh, overview, overview of what WebLIC is about and, and what it can do. Um, so the overriding goal of WebLIC from the beginning was to uh, pool NLP tools and uh, make them interoperable in um, an easy to use and open web environment. And the type of tools that um, we're talking about are things like sentence splitting, tokenization, lemmatization, part of speech tagging, um, which assigns the uh, part of speech like verb and noun to a token, uh, morphological analysis, named entity recognition, which was uh, mentioned before, and uh, two uh, varieties of of parsing dependency and constituency. So uh, this is not necessarily a complete list, but these are um, the, uh, some of the main types of NLP tools. Um, one thing to remember is that NLP tools in general are developed for a specific language usually. So um, it's, you wouldn't get very good results um, applying um, a, a German dependency parser on a uh, French text. So in order to develop these tools, um, the, we need people who are um, both very knowledgeable in the, in the language and also who have the programming skills to um, implement it. So not all annotations are available for all languages. And often these uh, annotations build upon each other. And that means that the annotation tasks must be performed in a specific order. Um, so part of speech tagging is, uh, normally comes before parsing because the parsing requires that or named entity recognition requires lemmas. Um, sentence splitting and tokenization are required for all subsequent tasks and uh, therefore are normally uh, the first to get ex uh, executed in a processing chain. Um, so uh, often the NLP tools are uh, provided as a package that uh, performs all or, or most of the annotations I mentioned before. Um, they can be used from the command line or uh, from within programming code. Uh, some examples, a uh, few examples are the Stanford NLP, Open NLP, or Berkeley. But um, for some people, these packages have some drawbacks. Um, maybe they're uh, difficult to install or not available for a particular operating system, um, especially for those who are not um, used to running command line tools or who um, don't have the programming skills or don't like to program. And also it's uh, generally not possible to um, sort of mix and match the packages and use some annotation tools from one package and other annotation tools from, an, from another one uh, because the input and output formats are different. So in WebLink, we uh, try to address some of these issues and we provide an easy use of uh, NLP tools online. And the tools themselves are uh, made available by Clarence centers as web services. So the tools are distributed uh, throughout the Clarence centers. And uh, we started work in, on WebLict in 2009. So um, even before Claren and uh, Claren and WebLict sort of grew up together. And as uh, the Claren infrastructure matured and became available, um, WebLict then made use of the of components. Um, in particular, the center registry and the center repositories, which um, 
hold the SIMD metadata uh, about the web services and the Clarin Identity Federation for um, Shibboleth uh, single sign-in login. Um, so here's a, a picture of uh, how the components fit together. Uh, we'll start at the, the Clarin Center registry, which holds information about all the repository locations, which uh, the harvester needs to um, query all of the repositories on a regular basis. Uh, every couple of hours this happens and the web, uh, web service metadata uh, is uh, queried from, the, from all of the centers. And then that gets passed into um, the chaining and execution engine, which is responsible for uh, making sure that the processing chains are valid and in the right order, since uh, that's why I mentioned before that they sometimes need to be executed in a particular order. Um, yeah, and the chaining engine also uh, actually executes the chain. So it um, sends the input to the first service and then the output of, of that service is then input to the next service and so on until uh, all of the annotations are done and it's uh, then presented in the WebLick uh, user interface. So at some point, uh, people started asking, well, we just want to, um, we're not, we don't really care exactly which services uh, are being used. We're not familiar with the differences between them and couldn't we just um, upload our data and, and click on dependency pairs or named entities and, and be done. So um, we then made uh, what we call uh, easy chains, which are predefined uh, processing pipelines for the most common uh, annotations and languages. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, we had um, people who said, we don't want to use the, the interface all the time. Can't we uh, invoke the services from the command line or scripts? <laughs> so for that, we have WebLick as a service um, for those people who prefer doing it that way. And coming soon, it's not quite done yet, um, is WebLick Batch, which uh, will be good for uh, large input files or many input files um, for processing. And the web interface is a, needs to restrict the size of the input files a bit um, in order to not put too much uh, stress on the service uh, the servers that are located at the various client centers. And then you can just submit your job and come and pick it up later when it's done. Um, so the, the WebLoot uses the uh, login via the Clarin Identity Federation which allows researchers to log in through their own academic institution. Um, currently there's approximately 2,200 institutions that are part of it. And uh, yeah, this is the single sign-on, which is um, maybe a bit like signing into your GitHub account with the, your Google account or something like that. Okay, so the general uh, workflow that I uh, will show is uh, just uploading a file, um, build the tool chain either with the easy mode, with the uh, predefined tool chains, or with the advanced mode where you can choose from all available tools um, and then run the tools and view and search the annotations. So um, what, uh, what I did here was um, I took some text about Douglas Adams, the author of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I uploaded the, 
the data and uh, went into easy mode and said that clicked on the dependency parses. And this is the tool chain that um, is the predefined chain for that uh, input. And um, you can see that it's first uh, produces sentences and tokens, and then the part of speech, and then finally the dependency parses. And then um, I did a very simple search, which just uh, looks for all the verbs in this uh, it's very small text. And uh, so I know that these are the, the um, part of speech tag for verbs is via VBD because it's they're all underneath the words here. And uh, this is just one of the parse trees uh, with one result. I can um, uh, browse through those. I can also look at um, the search results in the sentence context. So in red are all of the verbs that were found. Some sentences have more than one verb. So there are two uh, sentences listed twice. So sentence two and nine have uh, two verbs. And finally, um, uh, we can also gather statistics about our search results. This was a very simple search. Um, I just uh, looked for the verbs, but here I can see that um, there were eight occurrences of was and five of had, but I can also do um, more intricate searches and um, yeah. So I think that was all I wanted to say for now. Thank you very much.